Hey guys, it's Convolver here and today we're going to talk about gain staging, LUFS and how to do AB comparisons. Has this ever happened to you? You have arranged your entire track and it is all mixed and you're feeling all confident about it and you finally reached the mastering stage and now you want to go through the mastering. So you perform the EQing, multiband compression, limiting and all kinds of shenanigans. But it still does not come together. You go through the books, tutorials and guides and do exactly what they say. But for some weird reason, you're just not sure whether what you did made the track sound better or worse. And it feels like you just cannot tell what went wrong. If you know what I'm talking about, then you clicked on the right video because today I'm going to be talking about exactly that and why there is this uncertainty while mastering a track. And it has all to do with gain staging your tracks appropriately. But before that, we need to talk a little bit about LUFS and how to level your tracks to do an AB comparison. So let's get right to it. So what is LUFS? LUFS or LKFS for short is loudness units relative to the full scale, which is nothing but a scale of measurement for loudness introduced by the EVUR 128 by the European Broadcasting Union, which is a guideline for loudness normalization introduced to combat a serious issue in loudness war that has been going on for the past few decades. So back in the days when TV broadcast was sort of a big deal, there was this whole issue of loudness which used to happen where many movies would have a high dynamic range due to the presence of quieter sections with conversations in them and contrastingly loud sections as well such as gunshots, explosions and such. Which would often you know, result in times whenever there's a commercial ad which would show itself and the audio levels would be so loud of the commercial that you would have to manually turn down the volume yourself. Now, I have made a whole another video discussing of what used to happen in the past and how the undercurrents of loudness war changed with the introduction of these new normalization standards. So if you're interested in knowing more, then I totally recommend that you go check that video out. Uh, the link will be in the top right corner. This video will focus more on how to go about gain staging and how to reference and compare two versions of mixes and masters without the difference in loudness clouding your judgments of what sounds good so that you don't end up liking the louder version more every time and make the right decisions about what truly sounds good to you. So let's get right to it. As I mentioned in the other video, most stores and streaming platforms these days have opted for these new normalization standards which will bring down the volume of your track if it gets too loud. Now, the average LUFS value for each platform is different and you can look it up online or you can just pause the video right here and note down these values. Then download this great plugin called as Yulene Loudness Meter, which is free by the way, and put it on the master. This plugin has all kinds of standards for optimization. I usually prefer using the EBUR128 and then start mastering the track based on the platform that I'm going to be uploading it on. Making sure not to over compress and saturate just for the sake of the loudness war. But I think I'm getting a bit ahead of myself so let's backtrack a bit and we'll come back to that later. So if you have mastered your tracks before by yourself then you must be aware of the fact that loudness of your track increases as you go through the process of mastering. So doing a AB comparison would always feel like whatever you did sounds good since the average loudness after your processing would be more than the initial unmastered version. This is exactly where Yulene's loudness meter comes in handy. So here I've got the unmastered version routed to track pi in the mixer here. And then I've got another copy of the same unmastered version which I have made unique and routed to track 6 in the mixer. This is where my mastering chain currently is. Uh, which is just some EQing and some compression. So this is what it sounds like right now.
Now you can hear that the mastered version is certainly louder as compared to the unmastered version and it is sounding a lot better in comparison. And just to make the problem more obvious, I have over compressed the track to show you a comparison. Now in the master, I've got Yulene's loudness meter, which is going to tell me the average loudness of the track and a limiter. So in order to figure out the average loudness of the track, you've got to play through the track for a couple of seconds and then let Yulene's meter detect and calculate the average integrated loudness value, which is the second value in the meter where it says integrated. The first one is the instantaneous value of the loudness in LUFS and the red button with a cross is to reset the meter and restart the calculations all over again. So I'm going to solo the track number 5 and let the unmastered version play for a little while in its most busy sections. Alright, now you can see that the integrated value says minus 17.1 LUFS. This is the average loudness value for the section I just played of the unmastered track. Now let's note the value in a notepad and then reset the meter by hitting the red cross here. I will play the same section of the mastered track now, which is track 6 in the mixer and check for its average loudness. Now you can clearly see that the average loudness in LUFS is higher than the unmastered version. Let's note this value in the notepad as well. Now the good thing about LUFS scale is that it corresponds really well with the dB scale which most of us are used to. Which means that one unit of reduction in the LUFS scale would be comparable to one unit of reduction in the dB scale. So in order to get the average loudness of the unmastered and the mastered track to be the same, we find out the difference between them. So it says 9.7 in the calculator, which means that we have to reduce the volume of the mastered version by 9.7 dBs. Sometimes the mixer wouldn't show you the exact reduction in the dBs. So in that case, you need to look into the hint panel under the menu panel. Or you could just change the mixer layout to Y2 or Y3 and then it'll show the uh, reduction in dBs. Now that we got the average value of loudness of the unmastered and mastered version to be the same, we can clearly see how the effects that were put in the mastering chain compare with the unmastered version. As I've mentioned before in the video, I have over compressed the signal from track 6 to show you the problem in an exaggerated manner. So even though it was sounding much better initially when the loudness levels were not the same, now the mastered track somehow sounds a lot less dynamic and a tad bit muddy.
The same concept can be put into use when working with reference tracks. Just make sure that the average loudness of the busy parts in your reference track and the busy parts of the track you are working on are the same. One interesting thing to note is that SoundCloud still plays the audio at 128 kbps and it still lacks the volume normalization which the other platforms have opted for. So technically the loudness war is still going on over there at least at the moment. But I genuinely hope that they opt for one of these uh, normalizations soon and end the loudness war once and for all. And with that, we can wrap this video up. If you have any questions about this, then do let me know. And if you feel like I've helped you, then consider hitting the like and subscribe button.